Uh, tonight, we are going to start on our new series, Disconnected. Um, meanwhile, I'm upset about the rain because it's cold and I've been looking to do yard work. Damn. So it's damp. It is damp. Well, That's right. Yeah, when you get a house, it kind of becomes like, like maybe. I'm, I'm in, you, you guys know I'm in my 20s, right? You guys know that, right? I'm, 20, I'm 27. Yeah. That's insane. 35 is insane. <clears throat> but, all right, last week we finished our series, Back to Basics. We talked about how we are all a broken people who need Jesus and how we can successfully live a life for Christ in 2024. You guys remember the wrestling match that we had? Yeah. How could you forget? It was a time. It was a time. Whatever. Do we, do we remember why they wrestled? What was the point I was trying to make? Someone shout it out. Nathaniel. Someone else. How tiring it gets. Go ahead, just shout it out, huh? How tiring it gets. Yeah, that was part of it. Yeah, if you give up or that you'll lose. You have to put up a fight. You have to put up a fight. That's the one. You got, yeah. Even if you get pinned, you can still keep fighting. Exactly. You, it is the last week I talked about a continual fight, right? Our life with Christ is a fight. Once you become saved, that doesn't mean everything's rainbows, unicorns, and butterflies. You still have to put up a fight. And do you guys remember how you should put up a fight? Pray, read the Bible. Note takers, I love it. <clears throat> but all right, we're starting a new series, Disconnected, and I'm not going to do, focus, focus, everybody. I'm not going to do the typical thing that pastors do where it's like get away from your phones. I'm, I'm going to take it in a little bit of a different direction. Um, I don't think your phones are the root of all evil. I think our actions uh, are can be sometimes bad. Uh, me and the rest of our leader, or Olivia in heaven, will be talking to you in the next few weeks about how to disconnect from things that distract us so we can connect to who? God. God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you again for these youth. God, I pray that they would hear this word. They would become doers of the word. Lord, I pray that your, your presence would go forth and the word that is about to come, God, it would come from you. God, I cannot do it in my own strength, and nor would I want to try. God, uh, you are wonderful, and you are worthy of all the praise. So, Lord, be with us tonight, and be with us in our small groups and our hangouts. And in your name, Jesus, everybody said? Amen. All right, I'm going to tell you a story about Jesus, and that starts in Matthew chapter 4. Hit it. It should be in this, this. Is it there? It's the next slide. Yeah. All right, pay attention. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. Next slide. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And I, all this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended to him. So this story, just so you know the context of it, it happens before Jesus goes into his ministry, right? So Jesus was born and raised on earth, lived 30 years, and his entire ministry in the entire books of the Gospels are the last three years of his life before he died. So Jesus went away in the wilderness before all the miracles, all the healing, all that fun stuff. He went away to be closer to God because he knew that something big was going to happen in his life. And he wanted to come out on the other side. He, if, he knew if he wanted to come out on the other side, he had to be close to God. So my first point tonight is you need to disconnect sometimes. At every pivotal moment in my life, uh, before every big decision of my entire life, I withdrew to hear from God. I say entire life. I'm, I'm really college and on. Um, I withdrew to hear from God, and that's because I wasn't really saved in high school. Um, in college, this is a story. 
in college, Pastor and Lisa and I were dating. And I know, oh, shocker. I, she met me when I was 19, for the record. Uh, yep, in college, uh, Pastor Lisa and I were dating, and I was confused. Everyone say confused. confused. See, at the time, I had this view of God that if God wanted me to do something, he would say it, right? Makes logical sense. If God wanted me to marry someone, he would say it, right? That was my opinion of the Lord. I never heard God say, this is the woman you should marry. I never heard, had that like sky opening up moment where I felt like, ah, oh, she's the one from God. We, were, we had a great relationship. We were in love. But I was confused because I always thought that if God, if I was a servant of God and I believed in God, then surely something as big as marriage, he would say, he would speak into my life for that. So I didn't know what to do. I cried out to God. I fasted. I prayed. But all I got back was nothing. nothing. Silence. I was unsure of what God wanted for me. I was confused. This went on, honestly, for the better part of a year. I didn't break up with Alyssa because I loved her very deeply, and I didn't want to see her go. But I didn't know if God wanted me to marry her. And I loved the Lord so much that I really was willing to break up with her if that's what he wanted. Um, one day, I decided, you know what? I'm at home. I'm in Tennessee. That's where I'm from. I, I took my phone, threw it away. Took my phone, shut it off, told everybody, don't bother me. I'm going to take a day, and I'm just going to be alone. I didn't tell people. I was like, I'm going to pray and fast because I just didn't want the attention. I'm not looking for attention. But I took the day, put my phone away, got my Bible, got my journal, shut off everything, and just spent the entire day reading the Bible, reading, and sleeping. Listen, God can speak to you in dreams. I believe that. I mean, it's in the Bible, so you should believe it too. Uh, I disconnected from my life so I could hear the voice of God. Well, it took all day, but finally I got my answer. He revealed to me that if my goal was to please him and my goal was to honor him and I was seeking first the kingdom of God, then it didn't matter who I married. There's a great quote that uh, I think it's from C.S. Lewis, but he's, he's, he says, love God and do whatever you want. Because if you love God you're seeking him, you want to glorify him, you want to honor him, you're not going to make church, uh, choices that dishonor him. You're not going to make choices that are in spite of him. If you truly love God, and I knew in my heart of hearts that I love the Lord, and I wanted nothing better, nothing more than to please him. And that's why when God spoke to me, it was like a boulder got lifted off of my shoulders because God, it's almost like he released me and said, make your choice, I'll support you either way. Now, I, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I don't believe that there's one person that God wants you to marry. I believe God knows that one person you are going to marry, but I don't think he, he has a very specific person. I think God honors our choices, and I think that if we love someone and we honor the Lord and they honor the Lord, he's going to honor those choices as well. So if you want to hear more about my opinions on that, we've got a series coming up about it. So uh, I walked away from that day of solitude with relief. Um, and honestly, that's the only way to say it. And sometimes uh, what I learned is that sometimes you need to withdraw from everything to hear the voice of God so he can speak into your heart. If the son of God before ministry needed to withdraw, needed to disconnect to prepare himself for what was to come, how much more do you need to do it? We like to move out of reflex, right? Sometimes if someone comes up and tosses you a ball, our reflexes are either catch it or dodge, right? Don't get hit or kick it. Sure. That is our reflex. We do the same thing all the time with our walk, of, walk with Christ. We like to move out of reflex, right? We go to church. We go to youth group. We worship. We sing. We do these things out of reflex, right? But just like I said last week, just because you go to church doesn't mean you're saved. Just because you read the Bible doesn't mean you're saved. Being saved means you believe in the Son of God with your heart and you have committed your life to him. We walk with God out of reflex sometimes and a lot of our reflexes lead us into sin. Our reflex 
causes us to scroll on our phones when we first wake up instead of reading the Bible, right? <laughs> but when we disconnect to be closer to God, you are almost retraining those reflexes. You're shutting off the world and you're focusing on God. In sports, you practice and you practice and you practice and you practice until that movement of swinging a bat, of shooting a ball, of grappling, wrestling someone, kicking the ball, until it becomes habit, right? So if we put that much effort into school, into tests, into sports, we need to put same, equal, or more effort into our walk with God. We need to teach ourselves spiritual reflexes. So we know, we feel it in our gut when we need to withdraw because of the life that we're living. And I knew in my gut at that moment, I needed to withdraw to get an answer from God. Because I was fasting, I was praying, nothing was working. So I knew, if Jesus did it, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to get away. Now, I didn't fast for 40 days. That has to be the presence of God uh, sustaining you and leading you to do that. And uh, some of you might say, well, I don't need to disconnect, right? My walk with Christ is fine. And while that might be true, um, we don't disconnect because our lives are falling apart. We don't remove ourselves from situations to hear, a voice from God, hear the voice of God because our lives are falling apart. We disconnect in order to prevent our lives from falling apart. If Jesus needed to disconnect to hear the voice of God, you do too. And when you disconnect, you will be tempted. As Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, he experienced temptation at its purest form. The devil himself appeared to Jesus and started offering everything someone could ever want. Power, food, authority, riches. The devil was willing to give it all to Jesus if Jesus would just bow down and he would just worship him. How many of you guys have ever experienced something like that before, where you try to get closer to God and immediately with temptation? Yeah, it's, all, it's like a foregone conclusion. It's going to happen. Uh, you are, you're doing really well with your walk with Christ. You're coming off like a spiritual high, but all of a sudden, temptation comes out of nowhere, and it's almost like it knocks the wind out of you, and you're trying to catch your breath. You're like, where did this come from? Well, it happened to Jesus, Okay. Did you guys pay attention to what Jesus used to fight that temptation? Go ahead. The Word of God. The Word of God. Yes, Yara. The Bible. When you disconnect to grow closer to God, and when you're even fasting and praying, or just generally trying to get closer to God, temptation is going to come. And if the only solution you have is the Bible is the word of God. How many of you have ever texted somebody and you kind of get used to like the rhythm of their messages? You know what punctuation they use. You know those stupid emojis they use. If the, their phone number got deleted, their contact info got deleted, and they texted you, you would still know that, who they are, right? Because you're just used to the way they talk. It's the same thing with the word of God. How are you going to know what the voice of God sounds like Focus, Nathaniel. How are you going to know what the voice of God sounds like if you're not spending time in his word? You're reading the word of God. You're learning what the Bible says. You're learning what God says. You're learning how he talks. You're learning what he says. And then God's trying to speak to you, but you're so busy not knowing God that you don't know what his voice sounds like. So you're looking everywhere for connection, you're looking for community, you're looking for purpose, you're looking for belonging. And here's this God saying, here I am, just listen to my voice. But you don't know what his voice sounds like. You need to read the word of God. Jesus said it himself, I call out to them, but they know not my voice. You need to know the word of God so when God is speaking to you in your life, you can hear it. When you disconnect, temptation is going to come. But what matters is how you handle it. Will you give in to it or will you fight it? And afterwards, God will attend to your needs. What good would disconnecting be if we came out on the other side the same, except hungry, thirsty, feeling a little bit more stepped on, right? In this story of Jesus, after he resisted temptation, the angels came to him and attended to his needs. 
We do not serve a God who is flippant, uncaring, and unaware of our needs. Flippant, flippant means that he doesn't care, right? We don't serve a God who does not care. God is faithful to provide for us if we just trust in him. But sometimes we just need to stop giving ourselves everything we ever want. We're hungry, food. We're bored, video games. We're bored again, scroll. We're hungry again, food. We're thirsty, drink, all this stuff, all this stuff. Our needs quickly become ones. You don't need, especially in America, you don't need as much food as you're eating. You really don't. And it doesn't matter what body type you are. I don't need as much food as I'm eating. I don't need it. I don't need as much water as I'm drinking. I drink water constantly. I don't need that much. Our, our wants quick, or our needs quickly become wants because it becomes an excess, right? After he resisted this temptation, the angels came to him and attended to his needs. We need to stop giving ourselves everything all the time and take time to withdraw, to disconnect, and focus on God. When is the last time, this is rhetorical, so please don't answer, when is the last time you disconnected to be close to God? Have you ever? For me, the answer, if you asked me when I first went to college, would be no, I have not. So my challenge for you tonight is to take some time this week to disconnect and connect to God. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it has to be. It could be your cell phone. It could be food. That's called fasting. It could be water, also fasting. Um, it could be a TV show. It could be something. But my challenge to you is for the next week, seven days, take five minutes at one point to connect to the Lord. If you don't know what that looks like, shut everything off, open your Bible, and just read a verse. That's it. Take five minutes to connect to God. Because I promise you, if you do it, you're going to feel good afterwards. You're going to feel prepared for what's coming ahead. And God is going to honor you. There's this, there's this thing with uh, water pressure that the water keeps coming and coming. And if it's stopped, it's going to build up pressure, right? Until eventually, the thing that's stopping the water breaks and all the water comes flowing out, right? We all understand this concept. It's the same thing with our relationship with God. If we keep at it, if we keep studying the scripture, if we keep reading the word of God, whatever that, that thing that's blocking his spirit, whether it's sin, whether it's temptation, or whether it's just, if it's sin, it's probably sin, whether it's sin, if you keep studying the word of God, keep reading the Bible, keep disconnecting, keep praying to God, eventually all that is going to break through. And that's why sometimes when people are at the altar call, at an altar call, they're crying, they're weeping because they're experiencing what we call a breakthrough where God has finally gotten through to them. God has finally, his, the floodgates are opened and his presence is poured out. I wanna encourage you guys, don't get, don't get disheartened if at the end you don't feel closer to God and you don't think like, well, he's not answering me. I didn't get the answer I want. Keep at it. Kanye West, a couple weeks ago, had came out in an interview and he said he stepped away from the Christian faith because there was a, uh, he had issues with it. There's a God we're, we're called and told to pray to, but he doesn't answer our questions. He doesn't answer our prayers. How many of you ever felt that? I feel it all the time. But our God is faithful. And he doesn't always give us what we want, but he for sure gives us what we need. So don't be discouraged if you disconnect and you don't feel closer to God after it. Keep trying. Build up that momentum. It is a reflex. You're retraining your body. Build it up. And I promise you that breakthrough is coming. And whether it's a, a relationship, a, a sin in your life, uh, just whatever it is you need help from the Lord for, I promise you he's going to be faithful. And either he's going to fix the situation or he's going to fix your perspective on it. So I try this week. Take five minutes and try to disconnect from something and to connect with God.